Hi everyone, today we're going over prompting in Midjourney. I've got a framework for prompting for you today that I think will be helpful whether you're an advanced Midjourney user or just getting started. It should be said right off the top that there is no right or wrong way to prompt in Midjourney. For example, even with the most basic of prompts, like imagine stunning, or imagine beautiful will result in amazing images. But if you're looking for something where you have a little more direction and a little more control over your output, I think that this framework is going to help create outputs that more closely align to what you're looking for. Okay, let's get started. So here is the overall structure. And if this looks a little confusing to you, don't worry, we're gonna be going over each section and it'll become pretty clear very quickly. Uh, the first section will be medium, the second section style composition, the third section scene, then a modulate, and then your dash dash perimeters. Overall, this probably actually will result in shorter prompts for you, but as we've learned from Midjourney, that's actually a good thing. Given Midjourney's own example of an ineffective prompt, you actually don't want super long prompts as every prompt is limited to about 77 tokens. If you wanna to learn more about tokens, I actually did a video on it that'll be linked below. So brevity really is a key in terms of Midjourney prompting. It's kind of like the old Mark Twain quote, I didn't have time to write a short letter, so I wrote a long one instead. There is a reason that I think this prompt framework works as well as it does, and that namely has to do with how large language models work. As we know from ChatGPT, large language models don't necessarily read your entire sentence, but rather take things word by word. So this prompt formula cascades the information to Midjourney and allows it to parse it a little bit easier. And this actually isn't just limited to Midjourney. I use this across many image generators and it seems to work pretty well. So let's kick off with medium and explore the world of options just within that. We're gonna to begin to today with a very simple prompt and then manipulate the medium to see how much that changes. The prompt here is photograph, businessman walking down a busy street, blue color palette, and an aspect ratio of 16.9. Everything kind of has a bluish hue to it, including his suit, which is kind of a nice art direction touch by Midjourney. But keeping the same prompt and just simply switching the photograph to a painting leads us to this result, which is pretty fantastic. It is interesting to note that a lot of the highlight colors in this image are the same as the highlight colors in the photographic version as well. So let's try a different medium. In this case, I thought it would be interesting to really break out of the mold and try a 1960s era TV show. And we ended up with this image, which is super cool because our businessman is now obviously dressed in era appropriate clothes with an era appropriate haircut. Overall, the colors become a little more washed out and it definitely has that vintage vintage film stock look to it. And finally, swapping out our front end for comic book illustration gives us this result. We do retain our blue hue here. It is just interesting to note how much more pronounced the background and highlight colors in that orange become when we prompt for a comic book. And obviously there are thousands of other medium keywords that you can use. So just experiment around. I mean, even 60s era TV show is not really a medium, but it still works. So yeah, just go nuts and experiment. The next section is style and composition. Style is definitely linked to medium and it is optional, but I do think that it helps in terms of zeroing in on a specific you know, style or artist that you're looking for. For example, here we have 3D animated film, style by Pixar, businessman walking down a busy city street, and we get an image that is very Pixar-esque. But changing style by over to Tim Burton gives us this look, which to be honest, I don't consider to be overly Tim Burton. And that's actually something that you should keep in mind is that just because you call out a reference to an artist does not necessarily mean that Midjourney is going to A, cooperate, or B, know who that artist is. In the case of Tim Burton, I think that this is a situation where Midjourney is just refusing to cooperate because the image itself has definitely much more of a darker tone. In the Pixar image, we had a lot of warm highlight colors, not so much in the Tim Burton version. Overall, the Tim Burton version has definitely a much darker tone to it. I did consider that that blue hue might have been kind of screwing things up because on a very baseline level, Tim Burton's movies aren't really known for having a blue hue. Actually, that's not true because Corpse Bride totally has a blue hue to it. But anyhow, I switched that over to a black and white color palette and got this image, which is definitely much more in line with a Tim Burton-y look. The figure is now much more thin and skeletal a la Jack Skellington, and the background definitely looks much more you know, Beetlejuice and uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. But overall, I think that's just a good example of 
of showing how you're just gonna have to sometimes fight with Mid Journey to get what you're looking for. So moving over to the composition and shot section, we can also call out various camera angles and shots to direct Mid Journey. As an example, here is photograph long shot, businessman walking down the busy street. We also have photograph close up, businessman walking down a busy street. Photograph satellite view, businessman walking down a busy street. Uh, I do have to warn you about satellite view though, because that one in particular can get pretty wonky in terms of scale. So uh, unless you were looking for an image of a giant business person walking to work, like the most boring kaiju movie of all time, then you know, uh, you're know you probably gonna have to re-roll a number of times before you end up with something usable. Here's a list of camera angles that all generally work within Mid Journey. And don't worry, you don't have to like screen grab this or anything. This is all available in a PDF over on Gumroad. It is totally free, but donations are, of course, always appreciated. Additionally, I do have YouTube memberships turned on, uh, this little join button down there, and a Patreon page. Obviously, anybody that's signed up for either of those already has this PDF. If you're interested in joining either of those to help support the channel, that would obviously be super awesome. Okay, let's move on. The scene section is obviously our scene, and it's a pretty big one as it encompasses not only our subject, but any action, any props, and our location. For example, continuing with our businessman uh, by changing this to photograph, medium shot, businessman, rip suit, holding a katana, walking down an apocalyptic city street, blue color palette gives us this image. Everything about this says, do not invite Brad to the post-mortem scrum meeting. We also have cinematic still, romantic comedy, medium shot, businessman holding flowers, walking down a city street tone obviously has dramatically changed. Finally, we have cinematic still crime film, businessman holding a briefcase, and we get a very, I guess, maybe Coen Brothers-esque uh, shot here. So you can see manipulating the keywords within scene gives us dramatically different results. And I do want to add that I don't think that you necessarily have to be slavishly tied to this particular format. There are no rules with prompting. So even within this particular section of the prompt, if we were to move the location, which would be city street to the front of this section of the prompt, um, and our businessman now holding an umbrella to the back of the prompt, it leads us to this image in which we find more emphasis placed on the city street. So it's definitely wider. Our businessman is now pushed further into the composition. A quick note on action and character poses. This is something that I think that a lot of you have probably run into before. Mid Journey does tend to like its bullseye composition or worse bullseye composition with the characters back to camera. A trick to get around that is to direct your character in some kind of emotive action. For example, here we have cinematic still, filmed by David Fincher, a detective laughing while writing in a notepad, crime scene, city street, blue color palette. So by specifying the action of laughing, we've indicated to Mid Journey that we do indeed want to see his face. And while I know nothing about this fictitious David Fincher movie, I got the feeling that that detective did it. As a note, you can achieve similar results by ascribing emotion to eyes, such as like sad eyes or happy eyes. That indicates to Mid Journey that you want to see the eyes and that will avoid the whole like back to camera thing. And very briefly, I just wanted to circle back to style by, uh, just to sort of reinforce the idea of experimenting and just having fun with Mid Journey. For example, here we have style by Grimdark, a Viking gripping his battle axe, a snowy village behind him. But swapping out that style by to Wes Anderson gives us this hilarious hipster Viking. And the one that really cracked me up was fashion show style by Giorgio Armani. <laughs> I mean, that's hilarious. But playing around with style by will give you some very wildly imaginative results um, that break out of normal tropes as we're going to see in the next section. These are all about atmospheric effects like lighting or fog or weather or even time of day. Seasons, as we know, have a dramatic effect on the overall tone of an image. So uh, one thing that I've never seen, or I don't think I've ever seen, is a cyberpunk winter. So with a base cyberpunk prompt and then adding in cold and snowing into a modulate section, we end up with this image, which I think is actually super cool. Yeah, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that, but I, I really just don't remember seeing cyberpunk and snow put together. Like I don't really remember a very cyberpunk holiday special ever happening. So taking that same idea and then changing the modulate out to summer and hot gives us this image. Fall day gives us this, which I actually think is super, super cool. That is definitely not something I have ever seen before. 
And then finally ending with night, rain, heavy fog gives us this, which is very much more in line with sort of our typical cyberpunk look. Moving over to our dash dash section, uh, this is kind of a whole thing unto itself. Uh, there are so many varied commands in here that honestly, I'm just going to do a, a entirely separate video on that. So if you'd like to see that, please make sure that you do hit the subscribe button. But in the meantime, I did want to focus in on one that I think is generally underutilized, and that's the chaos command. You can call on chaos by issuing dash dash C and then a number between zero and 100. I generally leave it on 100, just crank to the max because it's chaos. Why wouldn't you want it maxed out? The way that chaos works is that it breaks up the initial seed images for each of the images in your initial four grids. And because of the Kuleshov effect, which is a film editing technique that was invented by a Soviet filmmaker by the name of Lev Kuleshov, which basically states that our brains can't help but create meaning when we see two back-to-back -back shots as opposed to one static shot. So simply running a very basic prompt like cinematic still style by Warhammer with a chaos of 100 creates these varied images that when you look at them, you just can't help but begin to imagine a story. And because these images are so varied in terms of color and location, it's a very useful tool in terms of world building. There's obviously a ton more to cover in the dash dash section, and we'll get to those soon. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments or stop by the Discord. And please feel free to stick around for another video. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.